All right, we're talking professional development of the nurse. I don't think you can talk about professional development without also discussing personal development. Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Chapel. I'm a doctor of nursing practice and associate professor and studying to have my board certification as a health and wellness nurse coach. I make videos for nurses, caregivers, and students on how to become more empowered and resilient. If that sounds interesting, Please stick around. It is week three of Nurses Month. May of 2021 was declared by the American Nurses Association as Nurses Month. Please go and check out videos one and two on self-care and recognition. This week, we're talking professional development of the nurse. You can apply the six phases of the nursing process to your own professional development. The nursing process is a do pie. That stands for assessment, diagnosis, outcome identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. What is professional development? Professional development is the assumption of personal responsibility for growth and development within a profession. Hmm. Notice how I said personal responsibility? It is not the responsibility of the employer or the hospital for your professional development. That's your responsibility. This is your career. So I'm saying it is your job to grow yourself professionally. There has been considerable debate about whether nursing is a discipline, an occupation, or a profession. And I think one way to answer this question is to ask yourself, is nursing what you do or is it a part of who you are? There's no right or wrong answer to that question. It's just a matter of how you view nursing. Now, the founder of Modern Nursing, Florence Nightingale, has this fabulous little book that she wrote. I love uh, to give this book, by the way, as a gift to nursing students. It's wonderful. I have several copies. It's just a special little book to have. It's called Notes on Nursing by Florence Nightingale. This particular edition has foreword and commentary by various nurse theorists. The way that we still teach nursing school is pretty much based on this book. Florence Nightingale would certainly say that nursing is a profession. In fact, a couple of quotes from Florence Nightingale, let us never consider ourselves finished nurses. We must be learning all our lives. And I love this other quote by Florence Nightingale about the profession of nursing. Nursing is an art, and if it is to be made an art, it requires as exclusive a devotion, as hard a preparation as any painter or sculptor's work. For what is having to do with dead canvas or cold marble compared with having to do with the living body, the temple of God's spirit, it is one of the fine arts, I had almost said the finest of the fine arts. And indeed, nursing is both an art and a science. We'll talk more about what exactly nurses do next week. So let's talk about applying the six phase nursing process to your own professional development as a nurse. First, this requires some sort of an assessment. Assessment can be both formal or informal. Informally, you might ask yourself a couple of questions to assess where you are professionally. Ask yourself, what have I accomplished in the profession or towards the profession of nursing? If you're watching this video up to this point, you've accomplished something. You're either working as a caregiver in the field, you got into nursing school, which is no easy task, or you've graduated nursing school, you've passed the NCLEX and you're working as a nurse, or maybe you've been in the field for some time and you're looking to grow a little bit more. Either way, taking stock of what you've already accomplished is a great first step in applying the nursing process towards your professional development. Next, you're gonna ask yourself if you were writing your own eulogy about what you have accomplished throughout your lifetime in your profession, what would it say? This is a great exercise for taking a look at where you are and where you would like to be. If you're not exactly sure, that's okay, but maybe you'll have a general idea of some things that you'd like to accomplish in your profession or how you wanted to make people feel, how you wanted to make an impression on the world. And this is a great place to start. So some formal assessment tools I would recommend are taking a personality test. 
the Myers-Briggs type indicator if you haven't taken that before. I waited until I was in my 30s to figure out what personality I was, but it was a game changer in terms of how I approach my profession because I'd had moments where I felt like maybe I chose the wrong profession. So taking a personality test was extremely helpful to me to figuring out how I could make nursing still work for me because there's so many different things that you can do in the profession of nursing, but also to understand what drew me to choose nursing in the first place. I recommend a website called 16personalities.com and it simplifies the whole process and you take a little quiz and then it gives you an assessment that's broken down into four categories. Personality assessment is based on the work of Carl Jung who researched and described the four main functions that people use to operate in the world. And these are both how we receive information and then how we express through our personalities. These are thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition. 16personalities.com will put you into four main categories. These include analysts, diplomats, sentinels, and explorers. 16personalities.com will give you the assessment of how you use these different functions and how that is expressed. It will talk about how you function in relationship, some of the challenges that you've come up against, and also discuss you professionally, how you work with colleagues, if you're a leader, how you relate to your subordinates, or how you might view leadership. So if you've taken the MBTI personality assessment and you're a nurse or you're in nursing school or wanting to become a nurse, comment below, what is your personality type? In case you're wondering, I am an INFJ. All right, so now that you've done formal and informal assessment, now it's time to diagnose. And we're not gonna apply a nursing diagnosis here. You're just going to identify your readiness for change. Ask yourself, do you even want to develop professionally? What more do you wanna do? Is there more that you wanna accomplish in your profession or are you pretty happy with your current assessment? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? And then where do you see yourself at the end when you you were creating your eulogy in terms of what you've accomplished professionally. All right, so in the planning phase, this is where I want you to create a SMART goal. And I love SMART goals on this channel. I have a video on what is a SMART goal. These are actionable goals where you can get started today on whatever goal that you have. And it's about breaking it down into manageable steps. So you need a goal that's specific, measurable, attainable or achievable, relevant or realistic, and timelined. So what goal do you have for yourself as a nurse? Some professional development strategies that I recommend are to join a professional organization. There are hundreds of professional organizations within nursing and many of them have local chapters. I would highly recommend looking into that because a couple things are going to happen. First, you're going to meet other like-minded people who are also interested in that specialty. And second of all, you're going to start learning more about what the possibilities are within that specialty. What professional organizations could you identify that you could become a part of? And this does require a little bit of investment. Sometimes employers will help out with fees for joining professional organizations, so do check into that. Then I would recommend attending some meetings with the local chapter of that professional organization. Or I would recommend attending a conference. And it has never been easier to attend conferences than it is right now, because just after the pandemic, many of them are still operating in a virtual fashion until they can get back together in person. And even then, I think it's around to stay that we are going to be able to access and attend more conferences virtually. This is more inexpensive typically. It's a great way to learn what's being discussed within that specialty and within our professional organizations. So taking that a step further, maybe you want to present at a conference and this 
either virtually or in person. And you can start off even by developing a poster to showcase a project that you and your team has, has worked on or accomplished. And you'd be amazed the information that you can share and disseminate. So did you work on a quality improvement project? Did you work on a committee? Did you update a policy? And could you develop a poster based on that work that you did? Let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning about abstract submission. I could do a whole video on how to create an abstract that's likely to be chosen for a presentation at a conference. I presented at multiple conferences locally and nationally in front of up to 8,000 people. I have a lot of experience with conference presentations. So I could also make a video on that. Another method I would recommend for developing professionally is to pursue a certification. Once you've been in a particular specialty or once you've been working clinically for two years, that's when you can go ahead and look at becoming certified in that particular specialty. Take a look if your particular organization supports certification, such as a certified rehabilitation registered nurse or a certified critical care nurse, a certification in cardiology. There's so many different certifications that you can get board certifications, which add some credentials after your name, which is a fun accomplishment. Typically, you would take a course and then take an examination in addition to the NCLEX. It also makes you a more valuable asset. There's some research about certification within nursing and some positive outcomes associated with that, particularly with satisfaction and achievement. Seeing if your employer pays some kind of a differential for having that certification and if they would help you um, pay the entrance fees to a certification course and or to sit for the board examination. There's a lot of help out there for you. And sometimes professional organizations also have scholarships that will support you to be able to pursue that certification for yourself. A lot of times it does require some maintenance. So you're doing some continuing education hours and showing those and then also requires a fee. Typically the certification is good for five five years. An example of a SMART goal surrounding professional development. By the end of one month, I will identify three organizations that offer certifications and choose one and enroll in the program by the end of the month. Or maybe it's just by the end of the month, I will identify three professional organizations that I could join and attend at least one meeting within six weeks. All right, so in the planning phase, you're going to identify what are the potential barriers, what would actually need to happen for me to pursue this goal, and what are the areas of support? So in terms of identifying barriers, you'll take a look at time. How long is it gonna take for me to take this course? Do I need to get time off of work in order to do this? And maybe you can have a discussion with your manager where you were, or if you're in nursing school, do you have the time to take this elective course? Could you harness the power of a student nurses association or a professional organization to help you to accomplish this goal? Could you get funding from your employer that would assist you? How much will it cost? Could you get a scholarship for it? So you're taking a look at what are the, the barriers and then what are the facilitators that can help you achieve this goal? All right, and then in the implementation, that is where you are going to carry out your goal and your plans. And then finally, you're going to evaluate at the end of that time frame that you selected, so say it was one month or it's six weeks or maybe it's six months, and have you achieved that goal? Currently, I am working to become board certified as a health and wellness nurse coach. And so I'm enrolled in a program called the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy. And it's a two course program, which can take six months. Fortunately, like many of the programs right now are so accessible because this used to be a program that I thought that I would need to be able to get some time off of work, like a, a two week intensive time that I would need to travel. And with my daughter and my family, that makes that really difficult. But I found that right now that this program has been adapted to be completely 
completely online because of the pandemic. And so fortunately, many of these programs that before might it might have been prohibitive to attend are now accessible because they're offered online, which is beautiful. It's beautiful that we could do that now. <laughs> There's so many opportunities that are available right now because of that option. So then finally, you're just gonna evaluate, did I accomplish my goal? And if not, what did I accomplish? Be sure to celebrate your accomplishments along the way because you are making progress and you are developing professionally. This profession of ours is a journey, not a destination. Self-development and professional development are all a part of the process. And there's so many things that you can do within this profession that's going to elevate you, that can help you advance in your career, that will make you eligible for more positions in leadership, in education, to bring a special element to the nursing care that you provide that's unique to you. Good luck with your journey. I'm here to support you. Please like this video and subscribe below. Have a beautiful month of May. Happy Nurses Month.